Motivated by his strong ambition to establish a presence on Mars, Elon Musk believes that a fleet of 1,000 starships would be essential, considering now an ideal time to ramp up production. The Starship program is making significant strides toward its goal, with a strong emphasis on accelerating test flight launches as quickly as possible. As of early 2023, there was a seven-month interval between the first and subsequent launches of the Starship program. Let's talk more on today's episode of NR Studio. The time frame between launches has now been shortened to just one or two months. This is a notable improvement, not only in terms of technological advancements, but also in the capacity to produce large-scale rocket components. However, the expansion effort goes beyond that point. Elon Musk aspires to increase the cadence of Starship launches to a weekly frequency. While it may seem impossible, it is in fact entirely achievable. SpaceX is augmenting its production capabilities by establishing a new, larger assembly facility known as Gigabay in Texas. At Starbase, the high-rise space is being methodically demolished to accommodate the construction of this substantial new facility. According to the latest information from SpaceX, Gigabay is set to reach a height of 388 feet, with its main structure extending to about 380 feet. While the exact width and depth have yet to be verified, rendering suggests that it will occupy a much larger footprint than the high bay. Importantly, the design will incorporate two access points, optimizing internal workspace to facilitate the simultaneous assembly and repair of multiple Starship vehicles and super heavy boosters. Furthermore, SpaceX intends to expand its operational footprint in Florida by establishing a Gigafactory and Star Factory complex at its Robert Road facility. If construction adheres to the stated schedule, both locations are projected to begin operations in August of next year. Ultimately, SpaceX has been diligently building out the manufacturing infrastructure to facilitate the bold launch frequency that Musk envisions. If the goal is to achieve one Starship launch per week, it is imperative that SpaceX workforce be able to produce one Starship per week. However, Musk actually has a more ambitious vision for SpaceX speed. The SpaceX X factory is engineered to produce a Starship every 72 hours, which means a new vehicle will be launched every three days. Producing a Starship every three days would yield about 100 Starships per year, making it easier for SpaceX to achieve its long-term goal within a decade. A convoy of 1,000 Starships, each designed to accommodate 100 people, would have the capacity to transport 100,000 settlers or carry 100 megatons of cargo to Mars in the first year alone. Elon Musk has consistently advocated for the improvement of Starship, which is engineered to be a fully reusable launch system and the largest flying object ever built, with the goal of achieving operational readiness at the earliest opportunity. He has plenty of experience in that regard. He persevered through Tesla's notorious production challenges in 2017 and 2018. Building a factory, overhauling processes, sacrificing sleep, and facing considerable mental stress. Today, Tesla produces more than 10,000 vehicles each week. Musk has leveraged insights gained from Tesla's assembly line to implement strategies to prevent worker burnout. They adhere to a rotating schedule of three consecutive 12-hour shifts, followed by a four-day weekend. Later, they engage in a sequence of four 12-hour shifts, culminating in a well-deserved three-day weekend. By implementing four alternating shifts, the Boca Chica facility is able to operate at maximum capacity continuously around the clock, seven days a week. SpaceX X strategically offers free hot meals at three to four hour intervals to keep its workforce motivated. Needless to say, SpaceX's incredible production rate is not solely due to the work schedule and factory expansion. Ultimately, it also comes down to the engineering design of Starship itself. The rocket most comparable to Starship in terms of scale is NASA's Space Launch System. Its components are manufactured at multiple locations across the United States before being transported to a central assembly site. This results in a launch vehicle that takes about a year to build and costs an astronomical $4 billion per launch. In contrast, SpaceX claims it has the capability to produce a more substantial and sophisticated rocket in as little as 72 hours, with the potential to speed this process up to as little as two hours. How is this accomplished? The explanation lies in SpaceX's fundamentally innovative methodology for Starship design and construction. No other rocket uses the unique materials or manufacturing techniques that SpaceX has so carefully refined at Starbase. 
Elon Musk originally envisioned using carbon fiber for Starship's hull construction. In theory, this composite material exhibits incredible strength while maintaining extremely low weight. However, in practical applications, this approach was deemed impractical due to Starship's enormous diameter. Manufacturing a carbon fiber hull requires the use of large lathes to carefully wrap layers of carbon fiber around a mold, then curing in an oven to achieve stiffness. Starship's enormous dimensions make this process impractical. Even if carbon fiber rocket production were to succeed, there would still be a significant challenge. The material's poor heat resistance. Carbon fiber begins to degrade at around 200 degrees Celsius, while re-entry temperatures can soar to 1,600 degrees Celsius. This means that Starship would require a very strong heat shield to protect its internal frame, negating any potential weight-saving benefits offered by carbon fiber. Furthermore, carbon fiber costs around $150 per kilogram, making it prohibitively expensive. Recognizing this obstacle, Elon Musk quickly turned to stainless steel, seeing it as a much more suitable material for Starship. Stainless steel costs around $3 per kilogram and has a heat resistance of up to 850 degrees Celsius, significantly reducing the need for thermal shielding. Given the combined mass of the rocket's structure and thermal protection system, a stainless steel rocket could be as light or potentially lighter than a carbon fiber rocket. After identifying the optimal material, SpaceX went on to refine its manufacturing process. The core approach to building Starship remained unchanged. Cold rolled stainless steel sheets were carefully formed into rings 30 feet, 9 meters in diameter, then stacked in stacked formations until the required height was reached. In the early stages, each ring was carefully fabricated from four 0.5 millimeter dash, thick segments of 301 stainless steel seamlessly joined together through a flux core arc welding process. However, this methodology proved ineffective and played a significant role in the unsuccessful performance of the Starship Mark I prototype during its initial stress assessment. In subsequent iterations, SpaceX switched to using 30L stainless steel, with each ring carefully fabricated from a single 3.6-millimeter-thick piece of steel. This innovation reduced the number of welds per ring from four to a single joint, and improved the welding process through the use of tungsten inert gas, TIG welding, resulting in cleaner, more consistent joints. Currently, the only component of Starship that is constructed from a few small steel segments is the nose cone, where the fuselage begins to taper. Inside the rocket, longitudinal stainless steel beams provide critical structural reinforcement and facilitate weight distribution. Positioned between the fuselage and the booster stage are the fuel tanks, which consist of liquid oxygen in the lower compartment and liquid methane in the upper compartment, each separated by a dome-shaped bulkhead made of stainless steel using the same welding methodology used for the nose cone. Through improved welding methodology and optimized material selection, SpaceX has developed a Starship that is not only more visually appealing, but also exhibits greater strength and better manufacturability. That's the strategic blueprint for Starship. But in the realm of SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket, the organization has increased production efficiency to unprecedented levels. In recent years, SpaceX has revolutionized the aerospace sector in a profound way by dramatically reducing the preparation and launch time of Falcon 9 rockets, transforming what was once a months-long endeavor into an efficient process that takes just weeks, and now, astonishingly, just days. Just a week ago, the company achieved a remarkable milestone by reducing the turnaround time for a Falcon 9 booster to an incredible nine days. In addition to this incredible achievement, SpaceX recently set a new benchmark by achieving the fastest launch pad turnaround time ever, further cementing its status as a pioneer in accelerated spaceflight operations. On Thursday, March 20th, 2025, SpaceX successfully conducted a seamless launch from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California deploying a cluster of satellites presumably associated with the National Reconnaissance Office's Starshield constellation. Designated as an ROL-57, this mission represented the eighth execution within the NRO's Proliferated Architecture Initiative, a sophisticated framework aimed at bolstering surveillance capabilities via a constellation of smaller, more nimble satellites. This endeavor transcended merely being another accomplishment for SpaceX. It marked the 50th launch of the Falcon 9 rocket, 
a significant milestone that underscores the rocket's reliability and solidifies SpaceX's preeminence in the orbital launch sector. However, the true narrative resides in the intricate specifics of the booster that propelled this mission, Falcon 9's B-1088. This robust rocket stage executed its fourth flight during NRO L-57, accomplishing an impressive turnaround time of merely nine days since its last launch. The voyage of B-1088 commenced last November, marked by its inaugural participation in a comparable Starshield mission from the SLCE launch pad at Vandenberg. Since that time, it has demonstrated its capabilities by successfully deploying an impressive 131 satellites into orbit during the Transporter 12 rideshare mission. Furthermore, earlier this month, it facilitated the launch of NASA's SphereX and Punch missions, both of which are essential scientific pursuits aimed at unraveling the enigmas of the universe. This remarkable nine-day turnaround surpasses the prior record of one day's established by Booster B100080 during the Starlink 6, 69, and 12, one missions in November 202, indicating that SpaceX is redefining the limits of reusable hardware capabilities. March 2025 has emerged as a remarkable milestone in SpaceX's exceptional string of record-breaking achievements. On March 15th, the organization executed the launch of its Starlink Group 12, 16 mission from SLCE at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. This launch pad, a vibrant epicenter for SpaceX's regular Starlink deployments, achieved an unprecedented turnaround time of merely two days and nine hours. In context, SLCE has become emblematic of SpaceX's accelerated launch cadence, executing missions, predominantly Starlink deployments, at a velocity that would have been inconceivable a decade prior. The Starlink missions conducted by SpaceX notably function as an experimental platform for advancing the capabilities of its Falcon 9 boosters. Whether it's operating the most experienced boosters within the fleet or significantly reducing turnaround times, the company is intentionally investigating the critical failure points of its reusable rockets. Notably, despite this assertive strategy, there has yet to be any public evidence indicating a definitive limitation on the reusability potential of the Falcon 9. The rationale behind SpaceX's fervent pursuit of rapid turnarounds is evident. The company is establishing the foundation for the ambitious operational objectives of Starship. Unlike the Falcon 9, which features partial reusability with the first stage landing and undergoing repairs while the second stage is deployed, Starship is engineered for full reusability. Both the Super Heavy booster and its upper stage are intended to return to Earth, facilitating rapid redeployment. SpaceX envisions a future where Starship is capable of executing multiple launches per day from a single pad using the same hardware. This unprecedented frequency of launches per hour would fundamentally change the economics and accessibility of spaceflight. While Starship is still in its testing phase, the successful turnaround of the Falcon 9 provides insight into the empirical data SpaceX is gathering to realize this vision. Consider the evolution of Falcon 9 turnaround times. What began as a protracted 100-day repair effort in the early stages of reusability has been reduced significantly over the years. By 2023, achieving turnaround times of 20 to 30 days has become standard practice. A notable improvement, though still far from SpaceX's ultimate aspiration. Now with a remarkable turnaround time of nine days and a launch pad record of less than three days, SpaceX is showing that even its more conventional workhorses can operate at speeds that surpass the most ambitious aspirations of traditional aerospace companies. In the case of the Falcon 9, the limiting element is not just the length of time required for booster repairs. SpaceX has refined the process, but the crux of the issue lies in the accessibility of the missions to be performed. With a sizable inventory of Starlink satellites ready to go, the company has ample opportunity to push its limits. However, as Starship prepares to assume Starlink launch responsibilities in the years ahead, the Falcon 9's role could expand, potentially slowing its rapid turnaround rate. Nonetheless, SpaceX is demonstrating a steadfast commitment to advancing its pursuit of efficiency. That's it for today's episode, and thanks for your support.